Hi, today I prepared another population genetics video and today I'm going to talk about loss of heterozygosity from the genetic drift. And uh, probably most of you understand the concept that if we start uh, a new population with just a few um, animals or few plants, this might lead that uh, in a few generations due to genetic uh, load and uh, due to loss of uh, uh, variability, such a population would eventually die. And uh, of course, uh, you probably uh, know that uh, the smaller the population, the faster such process as uh, loss of variability and adaptation uh, would happen. So here uh, on this picture, you see uh, how uh, this process uh, goes according to the number of the um, population that we establish. For example, here we have uh, uh, effective number of the animals. Uh, effective number means animals that participate in breeding. For example, here we have 10. Those uh, actual uh, population or population census can be uh, larger, for example, 20 animals or 50 animals, but we consider only those uh, animals that participate uh, in the breeding and we uh, count them uh, for this purpose. So, as you see, this is a decline of the heterozygosity over the time and uh, this is uh, heterozygosity that we start with uh, and uh, with each generation. So this is these numbers uh, represent generations and uh, so one, two, three and up to ten generation you can see uh, the decline of the heterozygosity or loss variability and with uh, effective number of population just uh, five individuals, uh, this is uh, this decline uh, going to happen even faster. And um, as you see, for example, here uh, we are going to lose after probably 11 or 12 uh, generation, we are going to lose uh, some of the alleles and they are going to be fixation, uh, meaning that only one allele would be left. And uh, as you see here, with uh, effective number of population uh, 50 um, animals, uh, the decline is much smaller, with uh, 100 even smaller after 10 generations, and with effective number of the uh, 1000 individuals, as you see, uh, the community uh, stable. And uh, earlier, like 50 or 70 years ago, uh, there was a year that um, in order to establish population, we need a much smaller number of individuals, like uh, some uh, were thinking that uh, 10 would be enough or 50. But according to this uh, uh, picture, you see that uh, this is wrong uh, understanding and the normal uh, population size should be at least uh, thousand and uh, more than thousand. So, uh, especially if we uh, only take into account uh, those animals that breed. So, um, uh, population census in this uh, case can be two, three, five thousand animals because some of them can be too old to breed. Some of them, some of them. Um, may not participate in breeding uh, due to um, uh, some problems with the reproductive system. Some uh, cannot, uh, take partic cannot participate in breeding because uh, they are outcompete, uh, because there is always um, competition. And uh, there is also some other factors like, uh, for example, family size or how many uh, progeny female may have and also influence uh, effective population size such factors as 
um, balance between sexes. So uh, imagine that a population where we have uh, 50 uh, male and 50 female animals uh, wouldn't be the same um, as a population where we have, say, um, 10 males and 90 females. So genetic variability would be less in such population. And um, so let me right now demonstrate you some examples. So imagine that um, we have uh, 1000 animals and this 1000 animals would have uh, each one would have uh, two alleles because animals are deployed so uh, we have to multiply by two and the total number of alleles in such population would be 2000. And now imagine that uh, we have uh, some uh, recessive allele uh, and allele is just variation of the gene. So imagine that we have uh, some of the recessive allele present uh, in uh, about 5%. So if we multiply this number by 5% or 0 0.05, we are going to get 100 alleles. That is no so bad. But now imagine that we have a population uh, of 10 animals. Once again, we have to multiply by 2 in order to get a number of the uh, uh, genes or alleles. So this is going to be 20 alleles here in this population. Once again, if we multiply by 5%, that is 0 0.05, uh, we are going to get only one allele. So, as you see, uh, this is much easier to lose this allele in a smaller population than uh, 100 alleles uh, in a larger population. And now I want you to demonstrate formula that we use in order to find um, how uh, loss of heterozygosity happens uh, over the time. And uh, here is uh, how we calculate uh, loss of the um, heterozygosity in one generation. So uh, H, H uh, stands for the heterozygosity would equal 1 divided by 2 n e and once again n e is a number of uh, animals or plants or uh, this can be any uh, biological uh, object that we study and e stands for the effective and I already explained you what the effective means so if we, for example, uh, have, um, and sorry, here we have 1 minus. So, uh, for example, uh, if we have, um, uh, say, 50 animals, so let's uh, think about this case here. So if we have 50 animals, uh, our formula would be 1 minus 1 divided by 2 and multiply it by 50, 50 animals that breed. And we are going to get here 1 minus 0 0.01 or uh, loss of the heterozygosity. Uh, so this is going to be uh, generation uh, 2. So, or if we start with generation 0, well, we consider this to be generation 1. Or if we start with generation 1, this would be generation 2. So uh, in this second generation, we are going to uh, have uh, 0.99% uh, of the initial heterozygosity. So as you see, 1% uh, of the heterozygosity would be lost. And uh, how we can uh, find... Uh, 
how uh, this number would change over the time uh, and uh, here is how we calculate this so heterozygosity over the time equal to heterozygosity raised uh, this number so if we interested uh, what is the loss of the heterozygosity would be um, in this example where we have 50 breeding animals uh, this would be for example for uh, insert uh, generation we would have uh, H raised 3 so this is going to be H3 equal to uh, 0 0.99 raised 3 and this is going to be 0 0.97 so according to this formula, after three generations, we would have 97% uh, of the initial heterozygosity. And uh, so uh, you can use this formula in order to find uh, how uh, heterozygosity uh, or variability uh, would be lost in uh, such population. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Goodbye.